Next, we've got a talk from uh, Jonathan Sullen and Romain Thomas, who have come uh, from Quark's lab, which is across the Atlantic Ocean. So, come a long way to be here with us. Um, <clears throat> they're the developers of a uh, binary analysis framework called Triton, which they recently used to solve some really difficult um, binary obfuscation challenges. And they're going to tell us all about uh, how they did that. All right, take it away. So today we're going to talk about um, virtual machine-based software protections and how Triton can help to reverse such protections. So here's Roman, and I'm Jonathan. We come from Quark's Lab, and we mainly doing reverse engineering software protection and software verification stuff. So this talk will be split in three parts. The first one will be an introduction to Triton. Then Roman will talk about concepts of virtual machine-based software protections. Then we will show you some demonstration about how Triton can break such protections. So Triton. So Triton is a dynamic binary analysis framework. It only deals with Intel instructions. And you are able to do some dynamic symbolic execution to perform some taint analysis and to emulate some part of code or binary. And Triton give all information about an instruction semantics over an AST. And on this AST, you are able to do some transformation to perform some deobfuscation or obfuscation stuff. So basically, Triton is a library on Linux, OS X, and Windows, and, and provide a C++ and Python API and you are able to plug any kind of tracers to this API, um, like PIN, Valgrain, QEMU, and stuff like that. And over this API, you are able to communicate with all components. So the Triton API input is really easy to use. So give an instruction, and you get back, as a result, all information about the instruction semantics over an abstract syntax tree. If you give a context with this instruction, you get back an AST according to the context. And on this AST, you are able to, to, to taint some input data and to follow your input data during the execution. You are also able to define some symbolic variable to do symbolic execution, to do some simplification. So basically, you define some rules. And you say, OK, if you got some input AST, you transform it to some output AST. And you are able to print this representation over Python representation or SMT2 representation. So it's basically, if you want to be human readable, you print in Python. And if you want to communicate with SMT servers, you print in SMT2 representation. Then if you, if you give some sequences of instruction, Triton will emulate. So it, it will execute all instruction and will emulate, actually, your, the binary. So that's, that's what we call a symbolic emulation. So let's see an example. So we define an instruction, with, which is a XOR operation. We define a context for this register, and we process the instruction. By processing an instruction, it means that we will execute the instruction. And when we execute an instruction, we will disassemble the instruction and provide all instruction semantics. So this is the XOR operation. This is all flag assignment and the PC assignment. And the most important point to see here is that all our semantics are based on SSA form. So the reference 0 is the XOR operation. And for example, the 0 flag uses the SSA form of the XOR operation. And Triton are able to, to also provide all implicit and explicit information, so like what register were being write and what register uh, were being written. So for example, we can see the destination register, the RIP, and all flag assignments. 
So to resume, Triton gives you all implicit and explicit semantics information over an abstract syntax tree. So, so what about emulation? So if we define two instructions, so for example, we move five in RIX and we add two, then we execute these both instructions, we, we can get back the AST of the destination register, which is five plus two. And if we evaluate this AST, we, got, we get a concrete value. So that's the basics of our emulation. So now, what can we do with all of this? You can, do, you can use state analysis to help you during, during reverse engineering. You can use symbolic execution to cover some code. You can use symbolic execution to know what value can hold a register at specific program points. And you can do simplification to deobfuscate binaries and define some model to find vulnerability research. So now the question is where can come from instructions? So you can provide instructions over trusters like PIN, Valgrind, QEMU, and stuff like that. You also able to provide instructions from a memory dump or from tools like IDF. Triton supports uh, some instructions, include SSC, MMX, and AVX instructions. But we don't support yet floating point instruction because it's a bit hard to, to mix both theory with SMT server, uh, which is a two different theory about build vector and floating point theory. And we test our semantics uh, using the test suite of QEMU or trust differentials. So trust differential is basically we run a program and at each program point we see if there is a difference between the symbolic state and the concrete state. If there is a difference, it means that our semantics uh, contained an issue, an issue. So now Roman will talk about concept of virtual machine-based software protection. Hi. I will give you a quick introduction about virtual machine-based obfuscation. So basically, this kind of obfuscation will transform an original instruction set to another instruction set. So for example, here, we have a move instruction, and we can transform it by pushing the operand on the stack, and then calling the VM impl implementation of the move operation. Here, for the, for the end operation, we can also push the operand, then pop it by using a move. And here, we will perform the original operation, and we will move the result to the right register. When we have a call function, we can use a number as an index in the table, such, a, such as the trampoline function. We'll use this index to perform an indirect call. So we find this kind of VM in languages like Python, but also in obfuscator like VM Protect or Duenuvo, which are commercial obfuscator. There is also Tigress, which is an academical obfuscator, and Jonathan will talk about this later. In malware, also, we can find this kind of obfuscation because malware don't want to be analyzed, so this kind of obfuscation complicates the reverse engineering. And in some CTF and challenge, you can find this. So this diagram represents the abstract architecture of DVM. So first, we have a fetch instruction, instruction block, where this block will fetch the instruction in memory or in a file, depending on the VM implementation. Then we have to decode the instruction. So this block will split the instruction into operand and opcode. Then we have the dispatch block, which will dispatch the instruction to the transformation of the VM. So the handler are the implementation of the transformation. And at the end, we have the terminator, which stop the VM execution or will continue. So for example, here, for the decode of this instruction, we can split it in an opcode, the run, and two operand. For the dispatcher block, we have two kinds of this. The first kind is a switch table-like, which looks like this. So here is the dispatcher. So we have a succession of if-else block. Here is the handler, and here is the decode and fetch 
and solution. For the trim table dispatcher, we have a table here, which holds the handler of the VM. And here we will use a register here, here EAX. To you, it's used as an index in this table, and the dispatcher will call this the right handler depending on the value on the in the register. So Triton can help us to reverse this kind of obfuscation at two levels. The first level is on the handler by using the date engine and the symbolic engine, and it will be the first demo by Jonathan. And we can use the symbolic engine of Triton to reverse these two blocks, and it will be the second demo. So now Jonathan will talk about the Tigress challenge. So Tigress is a binary protection, and the Tigress team has provided some different challenges uh, with different level of difficulty. So for example, the VM0, which is the first level, contained only one level of virtualization, but with the VM4, we can see that they use two levels of virtualization. So basically, the challenge is you, you give an input, which is a number, and the challenge is return a hash. So the problem is, how can we recover the hash computation algorithm, which has been obfuscated, without reversing the virtual machine? So we use Triton, and we will emulate the obfuscated binary to get a trace semantics. On this trace semantics, we will define a symbolic variable, which is our input number. Then we will use the concretization to concretize everything which is not related to the user input. So at this stage, we're doing our first simplification. So basically, if we have an AST like that, we can concretize all this node because they are not related to the user input, as well as this node. So actually, we just evaluate the subtree and put a concrete value. So now we can move on a better canonical representation, so using Aribo. So at this stage, we use a NF forms. And then we can perform on this canonical representation some symbolic simplifications. But we don't use Aribo to simplify our IST for digress challenges because it was not necessary. Then we use Aribo to move on LLVM representation. And based on LLVM, we can use their optimization, as Felix said before, to reconstruct a new version of the binary and to break all obfuscation stuff. So Triton are able to extract 100% of the algorithm with only one trace. But as you can see, on some challenges, we need to do more traces because the hash algorithm uses the user input and go to different paths according to the user input. So basically, if we do several traces and that we do the union of these traces, we can get a CFG. And so with only two traces, Triton are able to get 100% of all the challenges, expect for two of them, because actually they use a loop on the user input and reconstruct a loop on the dynamic traces is a bit harder. And we solve all these challenges with few seconds. Uh, and only for the VM4, which is a double virtualization, Triton uh, used a lot of RAM, so as you can see here, and has spent two hours to reconstruct a new binary. So I have a demonstration. So we also tried to, 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 to solve all challenges with only one script, which is generic to all challenges. So we have, basically, we have a solve VM script, which takes as argument the obfuscated binary, so for example, we will use this ch oh, sorry. These challenges. So Triton will emulate the binary, will create simplification, uh, will create a symbolic 
expression and then use Aribot to convert it to LLVM and we reconstruct a new binary. So if I show you um, that's what our symbolic expression lo looks like. So this is actually the algorithm of the hash computation without all optimization. And if I execute it with a, an input, I get the same results of the obfuscated one. So now, based on this symbolic expression, we can move on LLVM representation. So here is our LLVM representation. And based on this LLVM representation, we are able to rebreed a new binary. So this is basically the binary. And if I show you the obesidem of the obfuscated one, there is a lot of assembly code and Sorry. Oh, no, sorry. It was the deobfuscated one. So if I show you now the obfuscated one, as you can see, we, can, we have all assembly code of the virtual machine, which is not on the new version of the simplified binary. So all our results are on, available on, on GitHub. So you can see all this repository and do by yourself the experimentation. Uh, so basically, in this, in, in this uh, folder, you can see all the obfuscated binary, and you have all LLVM expression, symbolic expression. You also do, from a given hash, go to <coughs> input value. So for example, I have an example for you. Um, if I'm executed the tigress binary with one, two, three, four, and then ask to reverse the hash algorithm. So this is on, um, so I'm giving the hash. Oh, well, we don't have that three on this machine, so you, you will test it later on your laptop, sorry. So now, Roman, will show you another demonstration about another attacks on a different virtual machine. So now we will take a special implementation of the VM. So we have this architecture. So the decode instruction will split the instruction into five variables, OP0, OP1, OP2, OP3, and OP4. Then we will have a dispatcher, which looks like a switch case. And the goal, uh, and this is the CFG of the VM. So here we have the dispatcher. Here we have the handler of the VM. So we call this is the implementation of the transformation. Here we have the decode and the dispatch block, uh, the decode and the fetch block. And here is the terminator. So we'll try to invert the normal flow of the VM. So given an handler, what instruction I have to put here to reach it. So we can process in one step. So first I will symbolize the instruction by using Triton. So here if I symbolize the instruction input and I perform a full symbolic execution from here to here, I get a timeout when I want to solve the equation because the equation of the VM is too big to be solved in a short time. So I have to process in two steps. The first step, I will solve the operand, OP0, OP1, and so on. And then given this solution, I will reverse the decode instruction to get the instruction. So now this CFG represents the simplification of the VM implementation. So here we have the decode block. Here is an handler of the VM. 
and I want to know which instruction I have to put here to reach this handler. So by backtracking this basic block, to reach this one, I have to be in this basic block or this basic block. If I am on this basic block, I have to previously to be in this basic block. And if I, have, if I am to this basic block, I know the instruction by emulating this basic block and solving with Triton. So now I will show you a demonstration. So this is the CFG of the VM. So if this is an handler of the VM. So basically, I want to know which instruction I have to put uh, on the top to reach it. So if I look the parent of this basic block, I can see that there is one parent here. And this, this basic block has one parent here. And then we, we are on the decode instruction. So here, it's quite easy to reverse it because it's, there is only one parent here and one parent here. But if I take this basic block, for example, there is two parents. Then we have multiple branches. And it's quite difficult to analyze. So we will use Triton to backtracking this basic block. So I will get the solution to the decode instruction. So I will get the OP0, OP1, OP2, and OP3. Given this solution, I will inverse the decode block. So basically, the decode block split the instruction with mathematical operation. And so I will ask for Triton for 100 solution. So let's see. So for this basic block, which is the first one I show you, so for this one, I get this solution for the operand. So OP0 must be equal to 0, OP1 must be equal to 0, and OP2 must be equal to 0. We can check this solution manually. So here, if I look at this basic block, I can see that OP1 is compared to 0. If I look on this basic block, I can see that OP2 is equal to 0 also. And then I am on the decode and decode block. So here we can see that Triton solved the solution. And then I have to invert the decode block. So here is the solution for the instruction. So we can see that there is several solutions. But we can have no solution for a given OP0, OP1, OP2. Now for the complicated basic block. So this one, this address of this basic block is this one. So here, we can see that there is quite complicated to reverse it. But by symbolic engine, with the symbolic engine of Triton, I get solution, a first solution here. But we can see that there is no solution for this operand because we can inverse the decode block. There is no solution for this operand. But for this given operand, I get several solutions. And I get other solution for the other block. So to conclude, uh, symbolic execution is very powerful against obfuscation. And if, we, if you do an obfuscator, you have to put mathematical complexity in your binary to to imply a timeout of SMT solvers. So if you have any questions. Yes. <laughs> OK. Um, oh, that's much better. Um, earlier, you said that uh, you're able to get the registers that are read or written by an instruction, right? So, can you repeat? Yes. So, you said earlier that you are able to get the registers that an instruction reads from or write to, right? Uh, do you use any special library for that? It's all done by yourself? Like, do you have a big lookup table that says that somewhere? Oh, the decode instruction? I okay. guess. 
So we only use uh, Capstone to decode the instruction, then we use our custom representation about semantics of instructions. Okay, yeah, that answers my question. Yep. Okay. So I can show you maybe. Um, So, for example, for an add instruction, this is our semantics. So, we only get operand, operand one and operand two. We create symbolic representation of this operand to get the SSA form to previously instructions. And this is our semantics. So, we only do, uh, we only define that the operand one is an addition of the operand two and we assign the expression to the destination register. And we do the same thing with flags. And this file contains all our semantics of the Intel instruction set. Okay, thank you. Okay, have other questions? Daniel? Um, I think you commented on Reddit that um, Kohlberg and his team um, are going to make a like obfuscation specifically for Simexec. Um, can you list all the ways that you think that they're going to like mess up Simexec via loops or? Sorry, I didn't understand the question. Um, so how do you mess up? How do you think they're going to mess up Simexec? Symbolic execution via their obfuscation. Sorry, I didn't get it. Basically, what sort of obfuscations do you think would be successful against this kind of symbolic execution? So, if you have mathematical complexity like MBA, I don't know, the MBA it's like super operator using um, arithmetic and logic operator and it's now to be hard to reverse using symbolic execution. So we, we really need to use mathematical complexity to break obfuscation, and to break tools for obfuscation, and also use maybe some uh, complex instructions like floating point or SSC instructions. But, sorry, that's the game actually. Uh, do you think that, um, you know, obfuscations might sort of take advantage of uh, maybe the path explosion problem? Yep. But we only work on one trace, so we don't have an explosion of uh, path. But if we do the union of several traces, we can get this complexity, and that's a well-known problem about symbolic execution. So we don't have solution yet for, for this kind of problem. Are you able to deobfuscate the MITA? Well, from the MITA, one of the. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. From IDEA, we can emulate basic block and reverse. Uh, well, uh, the MITA, the, the, the packer. Oh, uh, I didn't try. Okay. In fact, um, we deal with no packer with Triton, but only the unpacked version of the binary because packer use different different techniques that is not scalable with symbolic execution. So basically, the first step is to unpacking by using, for example, memory dump or something like this. And then we can use Triton to perform symbolic execution on VM obfuscation or like um, there is also some challenges with uh, dead block. And we can use Triton to identify this dead block and it can be used at this step, but not on the packer, because it's not the aim of Triton. As I, as I said before, Triton take as input an instruction, so you can do a memory dump. You, you put a breakpoint on GDB, you run you extract a memory dump, and you give this memory dump to Triton. And from this memory dump, you can emulate 
the binary uh, which is unpacked. So yes. Okay. Do you have any more questions? As you've been developing Triton, have you uh, have you needed to make any API breaking changes to the API, or have you been able to keep it pretty stable? I'm trying to keep it stable, but sometimes the design we have to to break the API, but we try to do our best to keep the API stable. Actually, the C++ API must be is the um, API will not change, but the internal Implementation will change, but normally you, the user, uh, the actually version of Triton don't change the user API. So, do you have different versions to help solve uh, this problem, or um, do you just tell your users that the library is different now? Yeah, you can use it. Uh, okay, thanks. Okay. So I think uh, we're going to have to move on to the uh, next talk, but let's give another round of applause for our excellent speakers.